Greetings, YouTube Mathematics community. Today, we set out to prove Rolani integral identity. Very useful, very nice. So here we have integral 0 to infinity f of a times x minus f of b times x divided by x dx equal to f of infinity. I know what you're thinking. That just looks wrong. f of infinity means limit of function as x tends to infinity. Minus f of 0 all multiplied by logarithm of a divided by b. You may be thinking... Why is intro with cheap as Russian accent? I counter your question by asking, why not? Anyway, after that discussion, the next question popping up in your minds would be, what would be the condition on the function f? Well, the only thing we need for the function to be is integrable on the interval from 0 to infinity. So... How exactly do we set out a proof for this very useful integral identity? I could have solved a few integrals. I did evaluate in the past using this identity in sort of one-liners. But I didn't want to use this trick because I didn't prove it. And then I remember saying that I would prove it, but then I forgot. And so here we are. Now before we begin the proof, we need a bit of a tool here. First up, let me introduce a fact that if you have a function g of two variables, let's call them x and y, and that function g is such that you can phrase it or frame it as a function f of the product of the two variables x and y. So we're saying that g is a function of two variables x and y, which is actually a function f of just a single variable x times y. So if you have such a scenario, then the derivative of g with respect to x times the reciprocal of y equals the derivative of g with respect to y times the reciprocal of x. And the proof is actually pretty damn simple. So I'm just going to prove it here. Let me just zoom this out a bit or maybe just, you know, rearrange things. So the proof starts out by calling x times y a new variable name u. So now, what exactly is the partial derivative of g with respect to x? Well, that would be the derivative of f with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x, correct, by the chain rule. So this would be the derivative of f with respect to u times what exactly is the derivative of x times y with respect to x? That would be y. So this means that the derivative of f equals 1 by y times partial g by partial x. And now if we differentiate this equation with respect to y, then we have partial g by partial y equal to the derivative of f with respect to u times the partial derivative of u with respect to y, which of course equals x. So in this case, we see that the derivative of f equals 1 by x times, terribly sorry about that, 1 by x times the partial derivative of g with respect to y. So both these things equal the derivative of f, which means that we have 1 by y partial g by partial x equal to 1 by x partial g by partial y, provided that the function g is of this form. Okay, that was a cool result, but how exactly does it come into play for the solution development? Well, notice that we can write the numerator as an integral. And to see that, we'll write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by x times f of x times y with the limits for y being y equal to b and y equal to a. So we're trying to write this in terms of another definite integral. So this is a nice way to start. And from here, we can write it as the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by x times the integral from b to a of what exactly? That would be the partial derivative with respect to y of the function f of x times y 
and integration here is being carried out with respect to y. Here I've just applied the fundamental theorem of calculus in reverse. So it's the reverse cowgirl formulation of calculus all over again. Anyway, uh, we have this form, we have the structure, but what exactly do I want to do with it? Well, again, we could just take the f of x, y term and write this as a function g of x, y. And that means we have i being written as the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by x times the integral from b to a of the partial derivative with respect to y of g of x and y dy dx. And now notice that the 1 by x term outside the integration with respect to y operator is independent of the y variable. So we could just slip it inside the integration with respect to y operator, and we have the integral from 0 to infinity, integral from b to a of what exactly we have 1 by x partial g by partial y dy dx. And now to make use of that result that we just derived. So this we know is equal to 1 by y partial g by partial x. So that means we have i equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, integral from a to b, no wait, it's b to a, of 1 by y partial g by partial x dy dx. Now we know that the integral converges, so we could switch up the order of the integration operators and write this now as the integral from b to a, integral 0 to infinity of 1 by y partial g by partial x dx dy. And now we have 1 by y, which is independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating first. So we're going to take that outside the integration operator and write this as the integral from b to a of 1 by y times the integral from 0 to infinity of partial g by partial x dx dy. So notice that we've just turned it inside out. The reason for that being that now we have the derivative of g with respect to x with the integration being carried out with respect to x as well. So we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus once again. This time, not in the reverse cowgirl sense, but more in the missionary sense, I guess. So this would be 1 by y. And here we would have the function g in the limit as x tends to infinity. So this is g of infinity y minus g of 0 y. And then we have this integration with respect to y. Now recall exactly what the function g was. So g of x, y, no, g of x and y equaled f of x times y. So that means the limit of, the limit of g as x tends to infinity, that's this thing here, would be f of infinity. And as x tends to 0, we have g of 0, y, just being f of zero. Okay, cool. So this implies that i equals the integral from b to a of one by y, f of infinity minus f of zero dy. Now f, in, f of infinity minus f of zero is just a constant number. So that means, oh, terribly sorry about that. That means we have f of infinity minus f of zero times the integral from b to a of 1 by y dy. And we know exactly what that thing is. That's the logarithm of y with the limits being a and b. So that would be log a over b. This implies that i equals f of infinity minus f of 0 times the logarithm of a divided by b, just as we set out to prove. That was one proof, and now there's another very interesting proof using the Leibniz rule. Now for a Leibniz rule or Feynman's trick approach, we could just treat the integral here as a function of parameters a and b. Or for making things easier for us, we could just fix one of the parameters. Parameters. Let's say we fix the b parameter and treat the integral here i as an integral function i of the parameter a. And now we can differentiate it with respect to this parameter once I write it properly. Okay, good. So we're going to differentiate this with respect to a. And on switching up the order of the integration and differentiation operators, we have the integral from 0 to infinity 
of the partial derivative with respect to a of f of a times x, terribly sorry about that, minus f of b times x divided by x dx. Now, uh, because we're differentiating partially with respect to a, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by x times the derivative of f of a times x would be f prime ax multiplied by the derivative of a times x with respect to a because of the chain rule. So that would give us a factor of x. And of course, the derivative of f of b times x is 0 because it's, in, because it's independent of the a parameter. Okay, cool. So we have some nice cancellation taking place, and we now have the integral from 0 to infinity of the derivative of f of a times x dx. That's the derivative of i with respect to a. Now, again, applying the fundamental theorem of calculus, we would get f of ax divided by a with the limits being 0 and infinity. So that means we have f of infinity minus f of 0 divided by a. That's the derivative of i with respect to a. And now integrating with respect to a so that we can recover the integral function gives us on the left-hand side i of a. And on the right, again, we just have two numbers here, f of infinity minus f of 0 multiplied by the integral of 1 by a with respect to a, which is, of course, log a. Then we have a constant of integration c. Now, for the constant, if you look at the integral function i of a, notice that i of b would give us 0, because in the numerator you have 0. Okay, cool. So that means i of b equals 0, and plugging it into the equation gives us c equal to negative f of infinity minus f of 0 times the logarithm of b. Okay, cool. So patching everything together gives us i of a equal to factoring out the f of infinity minus f of 0 term. Then you have log a minus b, which is, of course, log a divided by b, which is, again, a nice little proof for the Frulani integral. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram and support the channel if you want on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.